Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for December 20th, 2023. We're beginning to hear more voices of reason emerging in the midst of an otherwise bleak situation. The question is, is anybody listening to them? <clears throat> There's an ongoing UN Security Council debate in which the US is resisting a call for a ceasefire. They're using a linguistic trick. They're basically saying that they wanted to say suspension of hostilities as opposed to ceasefire. Well, the language that's been drafted so far calls for an urgent and sustainable ceasefire. And the U.S. is threatening to veto that. Well, the U.S. would support a more vague formula and then would abstain. That's not a solution. The U.S. has to be involved in a solution to this, which includes not just a ceasefire, but the way you get a durable ceasefire is with an economic and political solution, which stops the ethnic cleansing of Palestine and moves toward the establishment of a Palestinian state. Now, there, are, among the voices that we hear, I just want to present a couple to you. One is uh, the former president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, who's the chair of the international human rights group called The Elders, which was formed by Nelson Mandela in 2007. What Robinson says is that Biden's, quote, support for Israel's indiscriminate bombing of Gaza is losing him respect all over the world. The U.S. is increasingly isolated, with allies switching their votes in the U.N. General Assembly to support an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. The U.S. cannot afford to be further isolated by vetoing this resolution, unquote. That's from former Irish President Mary Robinson. Former U.S. presidential candidate and representative U.S. rep Dennis Kucinich uh, put out a statement in which he made the, the point that the United States cannot continue to obstruct justice at the United Nations. He said, Biden and Netanyahu are in this together. They need each other. This is Kucinich. Biden gives Netanyahu cover internationally to purge Gaza and the West Bank. Netanyahu gives Biden legitimacy as a defender of Israel in the run-up to the 2024 election, especially in those constituencies sensitive to Israel's concerns. Well, that's a fairly polite way of, of saying the Israel lobby, the Zionist lobby. But he said, Kosinich goes on to say, this is not U.S. friendship towards Israel. Quote, true friends would have advised restraint and a path to solve the conflict, not accelerate it, as Israel has done. True friends would have led Israel to address the cause of October 7th, the occupation of a people who live without the most basic freedoms, further exacerbated by the attack on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, one of the holiest sites in Islam. And he goes on to say the U.S. could stop the war today if the Biden administration wanted to, but it does not. The question is, why not? These are not the actions of a friend, because friends tell friends what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Now, the, the third group of voices, and I'll uh, attach this to the description section, is a group of a thousand scholars from New England who wrote a statement, history will remember this moment in which it calls for a permanent ceasefire and a durable resolution. So we're beginning to see more voices coming out on the Israeli Netanyahu war on Gaza. And we'll see what happens in the United Nations Security Council. But it's clear that people who are committed to peace and economic development and justice should be making their voices heard to add to this uh, growing chorus against the uh, war of extermination against the Palestinians in Gaza. Now, the other U.S. debacle is Ukraine, and it, it's clear that this is moving into a new stage. Zelensky gave a press conference yesterday, and he said Ukraine will win and Ukraine is prepared to negotiate, provided Russia accepts Ukraine's demands, which is essentially that Russia surrender. That's not going to happen because Ukraine is not winning the war. There's infighting going on inside Ukraine, 
as other voices are coming out challenging Zelensky. Uh, there are reports of low morale among soldiers, and these are coming out uh, with increasing frequency. And then on top of that, the U.S. is almost out of money to provide Ukraine. The Pentagon controller, Mike McCord, told the Congress yesterday that they have allocated all the remaining funds to restock U.S. supplies and replace what they're sending to Ukraine, which means the $113 billion initial allocation is done. Now, John Kirby, the spokesman for the administration, said there must be action by Congress, but the Congress is not going to act at, at least before the end of this year, and it looks as though the stalemate will continue beyond that, because the U.S. Congress, the especially Republicans, are recognizing there's no support for this war. Now, on top of this, the European Union funding pipeline has been cut. They did not vote to provide the 50 billion euros in aid over the next four years. And so Ukraine is, is sitting in a, a terrible situation in a battlefield with no money coming in. Now, you can add to that the problem of U.S. debt. And we'll cover this more in the, the coming weeks. But there was been, there's been a net increase of $1.7 trillion to U.S. national debt in the last six months. It's now at $33.8 trillion. Now, between October and November, the interest on the national debt hit the rate of a trillion dollars a year. That is, to cover the debt so that it's not defaulted on, it costs an additional trillion dollars in interest, and it's going up. This is unsustainable, and the Biden campaign is pushing the line that there's a recovery. Well, it's a fake recovery based on defense spending, based on green technology and bailouts, none of which are useful or good for the U.S. economy or for the interests of the American people. And in Germany, the farmer protests that we reported yesterday continue as tractors are blocking roads all over the country as the German government is pursuing this policy of austerity, of um, the uh, cutting the subsidies for diesel fuel for farmers and enforcing green technology. It's going to bankrupt the German farm sector, and this will have a profound impact on what happens in the months ahead in Germany. Now, in the midst of this tsunami of idiocy, we're seeing something interesting, which is the rise of the global south. Uh, today, India's foreign minister, Jai Shankar, is going to Moscow. It's his fourth trip this year to meet with his Russian colleagues. The topics include Indian investment in Russia's Far East and, nor and North. Secondly, increasing trade using national currencies. And third, connectivity initiatives, focusing on the International North-South Transportation Corridor, which will mean more trade. Now, while this is going on, Russia announced the escalation of spending in developing high-speed rail system inside Russia. And it was announced yesterday that Russia and China are cooperating on a lunar research station, that is a research station on the moon. What we see from this is investment in physical economy, in goods production, where the real wealth is created as opposed to funny money and, and a casino bubble. Now, finally, uh, let's take a quick look at some developments in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. The latest polls show that Biden is hitting a new low, not surprisingly. Uh, in the Monmouth poll that just came out a couple of days ago, the disapproval rate for Biden is now 61%. That's up from 48% disapproval in January. So it's a, a huge drop of support for the president right before the election year hits. 70% say the country is on the wrong track. You know, and, and Biden trying to tout his economic expertise is sort of like the old joke. Biden is saying, well, we're lost, but we're making good time. It's not going to work. What he is counting on is Trump's legal problems. The, the Colorado Supreme Court ruled yesterday, citing what they called the January 6th insurrection, that Trump cannot be on the ballot in the Republican primary in Colorado uh, in this coming year. If this 
well, this will inevitably go to the Supreme Court, but it throws a real wrinkle into what has been expected to be a Biden-Trump uh, re election battle. Well, both candidates have their problems, but more importantly, the whole U.S. political system is dysfunctional because of the suppression of honest debate and because of the commitment of the neocons and the neoliberals to sustaining an unworkable model, namely the unipolar order. So as we move to the end of this year, the one thing that we can say with certainty is expect wild times ahead. But don't be a spectator. Join with us to shape an alternative system, an alternative course for development of the United States. And I'll be discussing this later today in my weekly dialogue with Helga Zepp-LaRouche, and I'll have a link to that in the description section below. So thanks for joining me. See you again tomorrow.